How's it going everybody? My name is Ben TK and welcome to the behind the scenes of If You Could Edit Real Life with the Insta360 GO 2. In this video, we're going to be going through how I did a lot of the complicated scenes, the special effects, 3D stuff, transitions, everything. So let's get into it. First things first, let's talk about the camera itself and how it enabled me to capture the footage that I did. So the Insta360 GO to has 2K resolution and I know 4K is a big thing these days, but looking at it on the screen, I almost think it's 4K looking at it. It's just so crispy and beautiful. The colors on this thing are really nice, so it allowed me to get a nice grade on the video and it looks very natural straight up. There's nothing bad about the colors. The stabilization is also some of the best I've ever seen and considering its size, I'm so surprised that it even has stabilization that good. It also comes with an awesome little charging case. So if you're running out of battery, just pop it in there for a little while and take it back out and it should have some charge. You can also use the charging case to choose which video mode or photo mode you want to shoot in. I shot the entire video in pro video mode at 30 frames per second because this was the best recommended video setting. And on top of all that as well, it's waterproof. So that enabled me to take it out into the water and capture the skimboarding scenes that you saw. It also has a ton of attachments. Throughout the video, I used probably almost every attachment available. For most of the footage that you saw in the video, I used the hat mount with the go-to magnetized into the hat mount. This is how I was able to get all those first person view shots showing my arms. For the scenes where I used FPV drones, I used this action mount adapter that has a lip on either side and it just clips inside the adapter like this and it does not come out and then you just screw it to the attachment on the drone. There's also the magnetic pendant that you wear around your chest and this magnetizes the GoTo camera to it. And this was introduced in the very beginning of the video to show it was shot on the GoTo. For the skimboarding scenes, I used a mouth mount adapter with the action mount adapter and this was the safest way to film whilst in the water so I didn't lose the camera. Now let's look at some of the intricate scenes within this video and how I filmed them. One of the hardest scenes to film was the kitchen scene. This is the scene where I made my breakfast magically with all the plates and cereal flying all over the place. I wanted this scene to make it look like that the camera was still attached to my head but the way I had to do this was to put the camera on a tripod because if the camera moved at all, there would be no way that I could get these effects to work properly. So with the camera on the tripod, I reached my hands past the tripod and did the actions of making my breakfast with the cereal and the bowl and the milk, everything. This also had to be planned and rehearsed beforehand so I could do the actions accurately to how I would edit everything later, but it didn't turn out exactly in time like I wanted to. However, it still looked pretty good and I was happy with the result. So after I did all those hand gestures, I went into the kitchen, opened all the doors, poured the cereal, made everything, but I made sure whenever I picked something up, I kept my hand behind the object so that you wouldn't see my hand go in front of it when it was in camera view. And that way in post, I was able to mask everything out with minimal fingers creeping into the shot. I had to mask everything out one by one and I also had to time remap a lot of the objects to make sure that they went into the right spot at the right time. Now the hardest scene to film was probably the waterfall scene and this was an entire one shot take which was made up of about four to five different clips and this scene required a ton of planning beforehand in order to make it all work smoothly on the day. I had to be so careful with the camera placement in this scene. Every time I put the camera on a new piece of gear, I had to make sure it was in the exact same spot where it left the previous piece of gear. For example, I attached the camera to a Mavic 2 drone, flew all the way up and flew all the way down and when I got to the ground I had to remember where that location was, take it off the drone, put it on my head and then stand in the exact spot and do a jump as if I was falling from the sky. Then there was a bit of acting and then I had to do a jump as if I was going to jump on top of the waterfall and then take the camera off my head, put it on an FPV drone, put the drone in the exact same spot where I did the jump and fly it up from there. From then on, the rest of the shots were very similar. Just put the camera in the exact same spot on a different piece of equipment, fly it and jump. And because of this accuracy while filming, I was able to get an awesome result. Now for the train scene, when I ran up to a moving train and jumped through and slid on the train, to see Michael standing there confused. Now this is a scene that wasn't super complicated to film, but it did require me to think a bit about the physics of the train moving whilst I was running straight into it because if the train's moving forward, then I'm gonna need to slide backwards, obviously, to catch up to the train's momentum. So I took this all into account and to film the first part of that scene, I calculated when the train was about to leave and then ran down the escalator 
and as the train was just leaving, I ran up to the train, so it was moving fast enough to look a little bit scary, but I did make sure to keep my distance so it was safe whilst I was filming. However, it didn't look very safe in editing, and that's kind of how I wanted to make it look. Now, the next part of the scene, I was in the train as far back as I could go, and I walked sideways, and then I dropped to the ground whilst turning the camera, and I got my friend Rishi to grab my legs and pull, pull me pull. backwards and slide me as far as he could. Then I looked at Michael, and that's how we got the physics working in that train scene. Definitely one of the weirdest things I've ever done for a video, but I think it's that's just how it is, isn't it? When you see the final product, you realize, wow, that was actually freaking sick, but reality is you got to embarrass yourself quite badly. There was also a lot of time remapping in that scene as well to speed things up. So the 3D effects in this video were actually made from 3D software separate to After Effects because this is the only way that you can do it. So to create that skin board, I actually designed that in 3D software and in order to get the right colors and texture of the skin board, I 3D projected a screenshot of the video onto that object and then that gave me the texture and the look. And then I just animated it to spin around in 3D space and then I 3D camera tracked it into After Effects after that and that's how we got the shot. And then of course to film that scene, it was just me looking out into the water and then looking down with the camera on a hat mount and then I had the board in my hand film the exact same thing with the board in my hand and just match the cuts. All of the teleportation doors in this video were also created in 3D software where I used a real image and then brought it into the software, extruded it and created the individual parts of that door. But the hard part about these doors was tracking them into each scene. We had to be super careful not to shake the camera and to keep it as steady as possible knowing that I would have to track these scenes later because if there was shake, then the tracking markers would lose track of the detail in the shot with the motion blur and shake, and then that would just be an absolute pain in the butt for me to get the doors accurately tracked in. For transitions in this video, there was a lot of match cuts, so like matching movements up together and then just blurring them together to make it look like one continuous shot. For example, the scene where I'm falling onto the ground, I originally filmed the scene of me falling to the ground in one location and then did the exact same thing in another location, making sure to show my hands on the ground too. And then I just faded them both together and because they were the same movements, it turned out really seamlessly. And for the scene directly after that, where I grab the tram and pull it, that's just some simple masking around the tram in After Effects. As the tram keeps moving, I just mask it out and then replace it with a background layer that looks like it could have been behind the tram. And this worked out very well. Now, there was a lot of hand gestures as well throughout the entire video. A lot of that was actually filmed in front of a green screen. So I had the go-to on my head with the hat mount adapter and I just filmed myself doing the hand gestures in front of a green screen as accurately as I could for the different parts of the video. Okay, so I've got the Insta360 Go to here on a tripod and a green screen in front of it with a big light helping to light it up. Now the reason behind this is throughout the video there were a lot of scenes where I needed to do 3D tracking, like tracking the doors in the video. And if I had to put my hands out and done some gestures while I was in those scenes, it would have been very hard to get an accurate track in those scenes. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting the hand gestures in later. I'm gonna cut them out with the green screen in the editing software. And that's just one way we can get around very accurate tracking. I had to reset the tripod and get onto my knees because the green screen's not big enough. So this will still work. And that's the swipe, done. I also decided to add a lot more hand gestures to the video because I realized that this gave it a very engaging impact and you could see more of what the character was doing and feel it a lot more. Now after capturing all of this footage, I couldn't just drag it straight into Premiere Pro because it would come up in a big circular wide looking image. So what we have to do is drag it into Insta360's very own software, which is the Insta360 Studio, which you can use on your desktop. So you just drag the footage in, choose your type of stabilization, flow state or FPV. For a lot of this video, I used both of these stabilizations, but if you need to do rolls or any kind of parkour where you want the camera to flip upside down and come back up, choose FPV because flow state will limit you from going all the way down. It kind of acts a bit funny when you go too far. And from there, you can export it in the file format that you want, drag it into Premiere and start editing. So let's take a quick look at my timeline so you guys can get an idea of what a video like this looks like inside Premiere Pro. As you can see, a lot of the timeline is purple. That means a whole heap of these videos were put into After Effects in order to put these special effects and transitions into the video. Premiere Pro is great, but After Effects does an amazing job with creating very, very intricate detail effects. And on addition to all the special effects, underneath you can see a ton of different layers. These are all sound effects and voiceovers and music that 
that was put into the video. So even after I completed the full video, I had to go into detail with all of the sound effects. So when you're watching the video, you can feel the impacts, you can feel the environment around you, and it helps you to seem like you're experiencing that video as you're watching it. So much higher than I thought. Oh, oh. Holy. That's all we have time for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching the behind the scenes on if you can edit real life with the Insta360 Go 2. There's a link in the description if you think you might want one of these cameras for yourself. My name's Ben TK. Make sure you're following me on Instagram so you can see what I'm working on next. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everyone. Enjoy the day.